Hello YouTube, Blue Lines here, and uh, I'm coming at you with uh, an interface tutorial. I'm going to try and replicate something like this in my background, uh, at least the center part. Um, and just try and show you the different techniques and what you have to do to get to that stage. Uh, I won't be showing you everything because it takes really long time to do an interface. I mean, probably about 40 minutes. Oops. For about 40 minutes per like interfacing I do, like that center part. So I'm just going to do the basis of it. Um, like the middle bit here. So let's go into Photoshop. I'm just going to make a new uh, composition 128 by 720. Um, I'm going to make the background a grey. Just replicate it. Okay, first of all, let's start with a circle, um, the center part. So elliptical, marquee tool, get that out. Hold shift and then drag to make it completely proportionate and a proper circle, 380 degrees. Um, Gonna make the inside white. Actually, no black. So hit D to make your colors black and white. Um, and then again, hit Control and J to duplicate this. So it's like this. But you don't want it uh, black. You want it white. So hit Control and I to invert it. And then hit uh, Control T. Control T brings up these selections to transform. And then holding Shift as well. Remember, Shift is to make things like proportionate to what it originally was. Um, now we need the texture of um, this here, like what I've done here. So to get that, go to Google, type in scratched metal, go to images, and it's um, not here. There it is, that one there. So what you do is copy it, go into Photoshop, and you got this pattern here. And what you want to do is go to edit. And then define pattern, it will add you to your patterns, add it to your patterns. I've already done that, so I don't need to. I'm going to go to this black layer here, black circle layer, go to blending options, right click, hit pattern overlay, and this is where you want to find your pattern which you've uh, saved. So it's this one here. I'm going to add a bevel and emboss, so and then add the depth to a thousand percent. And the size, you want it so that uh, it's in the middle, like. Um, you know, so it's like that basically. So you can see the bend, like, don't have to explain it, the curve in between. Um, you want to take off, use global light, and then change the angle to suit you. So if you change it to whatever you want, you change the shape and the light. So let's have a look what I've done here on my background. I haven't really added a light to it, so what you want to do to that. I'm going to get it to the best I can. Um, that do. And then what you've got to do, you've got to change down the opacity of the white. So, maybe like that. Give mm. the black a little bit. Back, uh, put the black basically up and the white down basically that's what I've done I believe obviously it's going to be different I can't I'm not really good at replicating the same thing so I come up with a different interface every time but I'll try and do the best I can and um, I've added an inner shadow to this and there you go there's that I'm going to leave the inner shadow out and maybe add this in no I want to make it a bit darker though, we don't want it to, uh, to be that light, so I'm going to add another black overlay and then change the face to town. There you go, I'll leave it like that. Okay, so now for the white circle, what you want to do to this is, what have I done here? I've added another small one in between, so I'm just going to copy and paste the layer style. Like so. But this time we add an inner shadow. I'm not. I'm going to... Leave it as it is, but change the angle. You can change the gloss contour to change like the type of um, bevel it does. That's very useful. I'll leave it like that for a minute. Add a drop shadow. Take off use global light. And then s drop shadow is very important in uh, creating distinction between your bevels. Um, like you know what I mean in a minute. Now, and I can hit Control J to duplicate that and I'm going to clear the layer style so I've got this white again 
Uh, I hit Control T again this is to do the transform, and then bring it inside the circle which I've made. Now this one is much different. We're going to add a gradient to this. Um, so two colors. Make sure you choose uh, the best ones for your background. Oh, my, I'm, mine's blue and blue basically. Like so, at the bottom you want a darkish blue, and the top you want a light. So there. That one's a bit too dark. Um, too dark, too light. There you go, I'm going to leave it like that. And to this one you want to add an inner shadow. Um, you don't really need to worry about the like, global light or the angle on this one, just make the choke up a lot. And then the size a lot. Just like so. Um, and to this, now you want to add an overlay of a white. So make a new layer above all this. Get your brush. Change it to white. And then uh, get the brush to quite a big size, not too big though. Uh, yeah, that'll be a bit big. Um, and then with this, with your white, you just want to paste it on top of the top of the orb. You want to call it? It's the orb center part. And then change the layer style to overlay. Uh, you can make this bigger if you want, if it affects it a bit more. Um, and then get make a new layer. This is to add the little uh, bits up here with the white. You know, make it the shine or reflection. Uh, get your uh, brush again and you want a smaller one this time smaller size and then with your pen tool hit in the corner hit in, uh, click on the corner and then drag it a little bit like a bend so it's like this when it's like this right click stroke submit pressure and hit your brush that's what that's what it does there now what you want to do change the layer style to overlay and I'm gonna add a blur of Gaussian blur so it adds that little, uh, you know, and you keep duplicating the layer to make it a little bit more substantial. Um, I'm going to make the original layer normal and then change the opacity. Do it again, but make it bigger. It's quite a complicated process. It takes a few goes. You might not get it straight, straight away. Um, that one there, is that one there? Yeah, there you go, that's that done. Now to add, um, I didn't do it on the background on this one, but I'm going to show you other ways of doing that. So hit control and then click on the icon of where your picture is, uh, or the orb, so this, the, uh, this one. So control and then hit on the icon of the picture, then it selects it. How you have time? It's okay. Uh, I'm going to get this elliptical mercury tool. Now while holding alt, drag onto the orb with uh, what part you don't want the white to be on. You know what I mean now when I un unclick and then it goes like this. So I'll show you again. Control. Hit on the circle, the orb. Holding alt. Drag onto here. Uh, orb, you know, like this. And then uh, wherever you've dragged onto is where it won't display the selected area. So then get your gradient tool with a white and then go over it like that and change the layer style to overlay which is already on um, you can change the pace you can move it around if it's, as long as it's an orb it'll be completely the same um, make it smaller make it bigger like so this will go over the other bevels but it doesn't really affect it too much so I'm just going to leave it as it is oops I've uh, duplicated the same thingy that's why it's on overlay done it wrong didn't make a new layer. Make sure you do that. Change that to overlay. There you go. Um, I think it's better in the corners, like diagonal. So let's do it again. Same again. Circle layer above, like that. I prefer it in the corners. So it's whatever you like, really. Change it out to overlay. And then I'm gonna make another one and just reduce the size like that and then rub out what's not on it maybe adding a, a clipping mask but I'm not going to do it this time um, and then duplicate it, I'm going to duplicate it Control J transform, rotate 180 degrees and then put it in the corner corner 
There you go. Okay, so that's the general um, orb. Um, take it down as well. Um, so now I'm going to show you what else I'll show you quickly. Right, the the horns. You can go to the horns. Um, as I said, you can already see why I added the drop shadow. The drop shadow is very important um, because it creates that distinction from the other interface. The other orb, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure you do that correct. Um, there you go. It's looking very nice. Right, so now the, the, for the horns or the claws, whatever you want to call it. Make a new layer above everything. Get your uh, pencil. Uh, hit once and then holding shift hit again and then while it's doing that you just bend it and it'll bend it to this and uh, hit again at the top hit again down below and then uh, holding shift remember to bend it then hit back in and does that Let's see what that looks like in a minute just to see if I got the right type of thing yeah I have um, so when you're like this um, hit pencil and then right click fill path and then hit it white now to, before we put it inside of the orb section we want to make it uh, add a pattern to it so add the same pattern as you did on the background like this on the orb sorry interface um, the scale can be up to you uh, doesn't matter too much but obviously if it's too uh, small or too big it won't look great so I'm going to use it about that. I'm going to add a bevel and uh, this is the important part uh, depth to a thousand and size you want it just so it goes like that and it turns into this claw uh, reduce the opacity a little bit and the of the colors make sure it's nice and uh, in contrast with the colors um, let's try a different contour a second just to see if it works so that one's quite nice. You can try that one. Um, a lot of these contours work really well. Um, I'm just gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with that one. Uh, you could also add a, a color overlay, whatever color your back your orb is. So maybe a blue on this one. But I'm just gonna leave it out for now. Okay. So let's try and put this between um, the orbs. So that one there. So it's there. And then as I did on my background, just control J and keep flipping and rotating it 180 degrees. And there we go. There you go, there's your uh, interface. Um, also add a drop shadow to this. Okay. So there you have it, uh, that's my orb interface, uh, whatever you want to call it, tutorial. Um, I hope this was useful, uh, I know I yabber on a little bit, um, I hope I helped and uh, stay tuned for more. So uh, peace, thanks guys for watching, give it a like, cheers.